So one of the first questions that comes up when students start talking about viruses, a favorite question that teachers will ask them to debate is whether or not a virus is alive or dead. So uh, you can argue both sides of this point, which is why teachers, I think, like to ask this question. But if I were in one of those classrooms, I would say that a virus, as it's sitting here, let's just consider the coronavirus. As a virus is sitting here outside of a cell, it's dead. It's just a bundle of nucleic acid surrounded by some protein and membrane in this case. And if nothing else is around it, it's just an inanimate object that sits there. It doesn't do any metabolism, doesn't generate ATP or use ATP. It's not crawling around looking for a cell to infect. It's just something that's floating in the air or sitting on the surface somewhere. But if it's suddenly floating around and it gets sucked into someone's lungs and it suddenly finds itself settling down on the surface of a cell that it can infect, once it infects a cell and it's now inside of, a, of an appropriate host cell, then I think you could argue that it's alive. Because this tiny little virus, which is tiny in comparison to the size of the cell it's just infected, this has the ability then to trigger a sort of a program. This, this RNA genome starts to be expressed into a series of proteins which essentially take over the cell, take over the metabolism of that cell, and turn it into a factory for the sole purpose of making more coronavirus. So under those circumstances, once it's in an appropriate host cell and an infection has been established, then I think you could argue that it's alive. So the answer might be, you know, is it, the question is, is it dead or alive? And I would say it's dead and alive depending upon whether it's outside the cell or inside the cell. Hi there, Mark here, a colleague of Dr. Tim Hermans. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other coronavirus resources available at www.3dmoleculardesigns.com slash scienceofcoronaviruses.htm, including a paper modeling activity where you can create your own physical model of a coronavirus. We hope you enjoy, and thanks.